Discover Germany, its islands all along the beautiful North and Baltic Sea coasts. And in the south, the high peaks of the Alps. Between them, there's expansive countryside with rivers and lakes, low mountain ranges and forests. Germany also means about 82 million people in 16 federal states. More than anything, Germany means 360,000 square kilometers of variety. Our trip through Germany begins in the south in the state of Bavaria. Munich, with its 1.3 million residents, is both traditionally down to earth and elegantly cosmopolitan. Germany's third largest city is one of its most popular tourist destinations. The Oktoberfest alone, the world's largest of its kind, attracts as many as 7 million visitors a year. And Bavaria's capital has plenty of greenery. The English Garden is one of the world's largest city parks. It even accommodates two big beer gardens. Hannah Coppens, here on a visit from New Zealand, is impressed. She's enjoying the view of Munich from the tower of St. Peter's Church. It's beautiful, it's very pretty. All the churches are amazing and so much detail. And the roofs all orange, which is very surprising. <laughs> and of course, the beer in Munich is always a treat, especially in the world famous Hofbräuhaus, where tourists and locals meet. Gross. It's the best of the world. It's very heavy to lift. <laughs> <laughs> Every year, many Bavarians gather at Lake Starnberg, south of Munich, to commemorate King Ludwig II of Bavaria, who lost his life there in June of 1886. Uh, the Ludwig, II, Ludwig II is still seen as a fairy tale figure. The palaces are his legacy, and thanks to them, Bavaria is a bit more beautiful and attractive, and we're grateful to him for that. King Ludwig, who lived to be only 40, is now popularly known as the fairy tale king. During his lifetime, he was criticized for his expensive castle and palace building projects. Nowadays, his dream worlds attract millions of people from all over the planet. One of his largest palaces is on an island in Chiemsee, Bavaria's biggest lake. The island provided the shy monarch with the solitude he wanted. He started building Herren Chiemsee Palace here in 1878. A magnificent stairway leads to the royal bedchamber. Ludwig admired the absolute monarchs of France and was especially fascinated by the court of Louis XIV, the Sun King. Herren Chiemsee Palace was meant to be a perfect replica of Versailles. But the Bavarian king's palaces had no official function. They were just for him alone. He had his hall of mirrors lit by almost 2,000 candles in the evening. King Ludwig spent a total of 10 days here in the palace in late 1885, at the end of September. When it got dark, 35 servants had to light all the candles in the palace. Afterwards, the servants had to withdraw, and the king was left alone here in the palace. Farther west, in the Allgäu region, stands the most famous castle in Bavaria, Neuschwanstein. The castle attracts about 1.3 million visitors annually, more than any other. Its location atop a rocky hill makes it unique. 
With Neuschwanstein, Ludwig wanted to create the ideal medieval castle. He was enthralled by tales of the Middle Ages. His minstrel's hall was meant to be a tribute to the age of chivalry. More of a hideaway than all his castles and palaces, and reachable only by foot, is the king's house on Schachen. High in the mountains near Garmisch Partenkirchen, at an altitude of 1,900 meters, King Ludwig had an old hunting lodge remodeled. You wouldn't know it from the simple living quarters, but he established a fantasy world here as well. The Turkish Room, a touch of the Orient in the mountains of Bavaria. Time to turn further north to the state of Saxony-Anhalt, to Eisleben, the birthplace of Martin Luther. The theologian and reformer is one of Germany's most prominent religious figures. Martin Luther was born in this house in 1483. It's the oldest historical museum in Germany. As early as 1583, on the 100th anniversary of his birth, this house was marked with a plaque for non-locals. So you see that back then, people from other places, Luther pilgrims, were already coming to Eisleben. In the museum, you can do more than just look at Luther's era. You can taste it as well. Here, children are preparing a typical meal of bread with honey, butter, and fresh cheese with herbs. The center of the Protestant Reformation is Wittenberg, 100 kilometers from Eisleben. It was here in 1517 that Martin Luther nailed his 95 theses to the door of the All Saints Church. The theses criticized the selling of indulgences by the Roman Catholic Church. His act unleashed a movement that ultimately led to the founding of the Lutheran Church. Eisenach and Thuringen also changed the course of history. Luther first went to the town when he was 15. He attended a Latin school and lived in this half-timbered house. At this stage of his life, he was still completely unknown. 20 years later, he was a famous theologian and dared to challenge the authority of the Pope. As a consequence, he was excommunicated in 1521 and sought refuge in Wartburg Castle near Eisenach. Nowadays, half a million tourists a year visit the castle. It's one of the oldest complexes in Germany and a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The main attraction is the Luther Room, where the reformer translated the New Testament into vernacular German, a huge success. The first print run of 3,000 copies sold out in three days when they were presented at the Leipzig Fair in September 1522. The next print run appeared in December. Just before he died, Luther saw the one millionth copy of his translation printed. We can assume that anyone who could read from Flensburg to Tyrol had a copy of Luther's Bible. This is also the room where Martin Luther supposedly threw an ink bottle at the devil. Over centuries, pilgrims have scratched at the stain on the wall, peeling parts of it off. To the northeast of Wartburg Castle lies Leipzig in the federal state of Saxony. If you travel to Leipzig by train, you arrive in a place that itself is a sight well worth seeing. The Central Railway Station's grand entrance halls are nearly 100 years old. They've been restored to their former glory, and the building is now a listed historical monument. On Augustusplatz, a square in the city center, everything revolves around music. Both the Opera House and the world-famous Gewandhaus Concert Hall are located here. Leipzig owes much of its reputation as a city of music to the work of Johann Sebastian Bach. The Baroque composer spent 27 years here. The extensively modernized Bach Museum maintains his legacy. St. Thomas Church, just a few steps from the museum, is arguably Bach's most important place of activity. 
He held the job of choir director at the church until his death in 1750. It's been home to an internationally renowned boys' choir for almost 800 years. The young singers still perform here twice a week. The region known as the Saxon Switzerland begins 130 kilometers east of Leipzig. Most people take a boat trip along the Elbe to discover the landscape here. The boats of the Saxon steamship line, also known as the White Fleet, have been carrying tourists to Saxony's many places of interest since 1837. With nine vintage boats, it's said to be the world's oldest and largest fleet of paddle steamers. After just a few kilometers, the distinctive cliffs so typical of this region rear into view. If you prefer more active holidays, Saxon Switzerland is ideal for rock climbing. Visitors who explore the region on foot enjoy the scenery at its best. The stone Bastai Bridge is a highlight of any walking tour. Built in 1851, it's considered an architectural masterpiece and the most famous landmark in the region. From a plateau 190 meters high, it offers a wonderful panoramic view of the rocky landscape and the Elba Valley. Saxon Switzerland is just 240 kilometers from the German capital. Berlin, in northeastern Germany, is the country's largest city with 3.4 million residents. Berlin is constantly changing. The once divided city on the river Spree is now a center of the arts and culture and seat of the German government. And Berlin attracts tourists like no other German city. This family comes from Italy. They're taking a tour of the city in one of its double-decker buses. First stop, Potsdamer Platz. That looks like the Empire State Building. It has a nice shape, doesn't it? Where there are now high-rises, 20 years ago, this was a wasteland. That's because before the collapse of communism, Potsdamer Platz was in the border area between East and West Berlin. Not far away, the bus rolls past Checkpoint Charlie, the most famous of Berlin's Cold War border crossings. The East Side Gallery, on the eastern bank of the Spree, is the longest preserved section of the Berlin Wall, painted by more than 100 artists from around the world. Then the bus rolls past the symbol of unified Germany, the Brandenburg Gate. Then it's on to the Reichstag building, seat of the German parliament. The building's glass dome is quite a tourist attraction. On the boulevard Unter den Linden, there's a monument to the Prussian king Frederick II, also known as Frederick the Great. He ascended the throne in 1740 and set about developing the then capital of Prussia into one of Europe's most impressive urban centers. But the king's own most important building project was in Potsdam, to the southwest of Berlin. A rural paradise, a place free of cares, in French, sans souci. That was to be the name of Frederick's summer residence, and he supplied the sketches for it himself. Compared with the flamboyant royal architecture of the times, Sanssouci Palace seems quite modest, and that's just what fascinated people, even in Frederick's day. Even in the 18th century, Sanssouci attracted large numbers of tourists. And back then, what impressed people most was the fact that there were no sentries. It was always publicly accessible to a certain extent. You could always look in through the windows and walk through the garden, and in the 18th century, that was very unusual. In Sanssouci, you get a sense of who the king was. You can see his music stand and his flute in the music room. Not only did Frederick play well, 
He also composed several symphonies and concertos. Our tour of Germany now takes us on to Hamburg. It has the largest port in Germany and is the country's gateway to the world. The residents of this northern German city and their guests are never far from the water. Whether it's the inner and outer Alster lakes within the city limits or the river Elba. The maritime traditions in the Hanseatic city combine well here with the bustling feel of a modern metropolis. With a population of 1.8 million, Hamburg is the second largest city in Germany. And its cosmopolitan flair attracts tourists from all over the world. The Elbe connects Hamburg to the North Sea. It's just under 100 kilometers to the tidal flats of the Wadden Sea. The sea you can wade through extends up to 40 kilometers into the open water. A coastal area that's flooded at high tide and dries out again a few hours later when the tide ebbs. The Wadden Sea World Natural Heritage Site is one of the world's largest ecosystems of its kind. It stretches from the islands of East Frisia to North Frisia. Its Dutch and German sections were together declared a UNESCO heritage site in 2009. Every year, up to 10 million holidaymakers come to the North Sea to see the wetlands of the Wadden Sea with their richly diverse fauna. As soon as visitors arrive, the Wadden Sea has an important lesson for them. It pays to take time to become attuned to the rhythms of nature. The Frisian island of Zut is also a good starting point for outings in the Wadden Sea World Heritage Site. Locals like Melf Lange enjoy showing tourists Uva Duna at just under 53 meters, the highest point on the island. People should visit Uva Duna because it's one of the most beautiful spots on Zult. From up here you have a great view of the villages like List and Hornum, you can see Kampen and as far as Westerland. It's gorgeous at sunset. You can see the most beautiful sunsets imaginable on the island and it's just great up here. We move on to the western city of Cologne. Cologne Cathedral, almost 160 meters tall, is the city's most famous landmark. It alone attracts 10,000 visitors from around the world every single day. Cologne has a population of just under a million and is Germany's fourth largest city. One of the specialties of this city on the River Rhine is its local beer, Kölsch. Junting Lu has come to Cologne from China. The first thing she does, of course, is to visit the cathedral. The most impressive thing is that the Gothic style here, like the sharp tower. So. You can't see it anywhere in China, so that's amazing to me. Then it's on to the opposite bank of the Rhine with the Cologne cable car. It's very green, a lot of grass, and big field of grass here and trees. That's nice. The Ruhr region begins to the north of Cologne. It's an industrial region that had to reinvent itself. Essen is a prime example. There, what was once a colliery and coking plant is now one of the best known monuments to an industrial age. The Zollverein coal mine industrial complex became a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2001. Recreational activities, cultural events, concerts, and a museum. The Zollverein is now used in a variety of different ways. Mm -hmm. 
Stuttgart in southwestern Germany is the capital of the state of Baden-Württemberg. Stuttgart's connection to the automotive industry is central to its recent history. The Porsche Museum, a treat for anyone who loves exclusive sports cars, opened in 2009. Like all the vehicles exhibited here, this Porsche 959 Rally Dakar is regularly taken out of the basement and tested for roadworthiness. The Porsche Museum is a reflection of the carmaker's success story, boasting 5,600 square meters of space for 80 motor vehicles from six decades. There's plenty on display to please fans of the brand. That was the sound of a six-cylinder, 600-horsepower boxer engine. In 2006, the brand with the famous three-pointed star, Mercedes-Benz, also opened a museum in Stuttgart to showcase its own classic models. A tour of the museum starts with a journey into the past. The history of the Mercedes brand is the history of the automotive industry in Germany. It has the same basic elements as a present-day car. It's a water-cooled, four-cylinder gasoline engine. In the Mercedes-Benz Museum, you'll find icons of automotive history, like a gullwing and silver arrows. And at the end of our tour of Germany, we go back to Bavaria to the wine country of Franconia. Würzburg on the River Main. It doesn't take long to realize the importance of wine here. The vineyards reach right down to the city limits. Locals are especially fond of a tipple in the open air, preferably on the old main bridge. Fortress Marienberg is perched high above the river and served as the principal residence of Würzburg's powerful prince bishops. They developed a taste for wine in the 12th century and cultivated their own vineyards. In the 18th century, they moved into the Würzburg residence, a Baroque masterpiece which is now a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Their love of wine was taken into consideration when the palace was built and they had it provided with extensive wine cellars. Visitors to the residence can learn more about the history of the cellars and winemaking. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the heart of our cellar here. It's a so-called Stückfasskeller. What does it mean in translation? Stück, it's an old Franconian traditional measurement unit. Some six and a half thousand wine growers on the right and left banks of the mine have combined to present their wines in their own Vinotech. In its wine cellars, red wines are matured in wooden barrels. Whether black Riesling or Portuguesa, Franconian reds are very popular. The river makes a wide loop, the mine meander, around the village of Volkach. This is the heart of Franconia's wine country. The hilly terrain is a challenge for wine growers. It's too steep for machines, so all the grapes are harvested by hand. The rural tracks are an ideal way for cyclists and walkers to explore the vineyards. The wine growing villages along the mine always make for an inviting break. Hospitality is the watchword, not just in the wine country of Franconia, but everywhere you go when you want to discover Germany. <laughs> 